Hey, it's Kristen, and welcome back to another Letter With Me session. And we are going to do uh, June-themed words. So I'm going to start by opening my Files app and finding my downloads. And again, you have a PDF version as well as a Procreate version. So if the Procreate version is too large for your iPad, you can always upload the PDF version. So I'm going to tap that, and it will automatically import into Procreate. And if we have a look at the layers here, we have uh, the same five styles of lettering and um, you can just turn those layers on and off as you use them and make sure you're in the practice here. So we need to find our brushes that come with it. Uh, the lettering practice AF brushes. So the brushes each correspond with the style of lettering. So I'm going to start with the basic mono. And I'm going to zoom in really closely. And our words are June, Father's Day, Daddy, Summer Solstice, and Juneteenth. So um, for the J, let me just make sure, yes. So I am on a size eight and for the J I start here at the bottom curve around to the top and then do my descending stem loop and then an under turn an under turn straight line down remember lift after every shape that you do and then a compound curve and then the E I do all in one let me undo that make sure that lines up right that there the E I do all in one shape okay so the F I start with the little uh, hat there then I do sort of kind of looks like a J but then we're going to cross over and have a little piece that comes down there. So the A is an oval, under turn, the stem. And with this basic style, um, there's no loops or fancy uh, flourishes or anything like that. This is just really basic. So I do my stem and I start at the bottom here and draw back up and around and loop that through. And you might notice that each of my letters are approximately, not always, but are approximately the width of one of these um, boxes on the grid. Sometimes they don't line up perfectly and that's fine, but um, just use them as a guide when you're uh, not tracing like if you're just lettering on your own using if you use these guidelines and uh, you'll see how see how this S fits in those two and then the space between there fits in those two and then the U fits in there and then the space between the U and the M fits in there so um, that's how I use these guides to help me keep everything really consistent. This is a compound curve, stem, overturn, compound curve. I can't stress enough how 
important it is, especially in the beginning, to pick up your pen every time. And that's the difference between lettering and handwriting. Because handwriting is automatic, you don't really think about it. I can't remember if I said this last time. Um, and handwriting is usually quick. Whereas hand lettering is slow and deliberate and intentional. Let me just kind of close that up a little bit better there. Okay, and then we have Juneteenth. So again, the word June is in there, so we're gonna draw June like we did before. So I hope these videos are more helpful for you instead of just doing the practice sheets, um, the video as a companion to it, I'm hoping is going to be a little bit more valuable because you can actually see where, it is, where I'm stopping and starting um, and that sort of thing. Okay, so now that we have those done, you have more room to practice underneath or even just uh, next to those. So let's add a new layer. I'm gonna turn our practice off and turn off that layer. So now we're on the flourished model line. So let's go to that brush. And this is a size eight. So as before, I'm going to let me make sure I'm on the right layer. Yes, I'm going to start here. And now um, we're still going to try to fit the letters within these lines, but um, they're on an angle now. So they're going to follow. They're going to follow that angle. So instead of drawing straight up and down like this, we're going to keep our letters on this angle when we're drawing. Okay, so come up. And then I go back up and finish the flourish. You can do that all in one if you prefer. But for me, I feel like I have more control when I do my flourishes. Um, if I can pick up my hand in between doing them. I certainly do, but like this one, I try to do all in one, like that. You can even extend this up and connect to the U if you want, but then it starts to look a little wonky to me. Okay, so the F, I start with that line and make a little pretzel shape there, and you can see I picked up my pencil. You can continue through and then have a little, um, stroke there and then here I'm starting here and going backwards but you could certainly start from the left side of the F if you like okay so an A is an oval and then we have a flourish now here um, I go back and do the flourish afterwards I'm just going to do the ascending stem loop and then the compound curve and then I um, start here where this H loop starts and I draw kind of backwards like that. Go into the E and pick up because this next one is done in all one where you can go like this pick up and then this one is done in all one stroke.
Let's end with a little dot there. And then let's add a exit flourish. So for the D, I start here at the top, and this is all one stroke. Another A. Okay, then I draw the descending stem loop, and then I pick up and put my pencil back down to finish that flourish, and then I come up here and finish the top of that flourish. Let me line that up a little bit better. Just add a little bit of pixels there. And there we go. Okay, so for Daddy, I also have the streamline and stabilization set higher on this brush than on our previous brush. So it lets you, you see there might be like a little bit of a lag when you're drawing, if you draw a little bit faster, but that's because um, it's like taking the time to really straighten out these, these shapes for us. So they're not very wobbly. And I mean, that's the beauty of being digital and using Procreate because without it, my lettering wouldn't look anywhere as nice. So let me just show you in the brush settings. If I tap on that and under stabilization, I have the amount all the way up. But if I turn that all the way down and if I turn the pressure down, and the amount down. Look at the difference between that D and that D. So use the features in Procreate to make to make your lettering look nicer. Okay, let me put those back up. So I had the streamline amount all the way up and feel free to do this with your other lettering brushes too. I had the pressure at 23 and I had the amount at 52, but you can certainly play with this, um, make some of these lower. Uh, you can play with the motion filtering and find what works for you, but that is, one of the lettering tips um, for Procreate is that, you know, use the features that it comes with to your advantage. Okay, so for the M, I don't start with the flourish. I start with just a regular M and then I go back in and add the flourish after. Probably got, getting tired of me saying that, but that's how I prefer to do it. Okay, let's do this flourish, which is actually the T crossbar. Okay, this time I'll show you what it looks like if you do the top flourish all in one stroke.
didn't really stay on the lines in that one. Um, if you don't stay on the lines, that's perfectly fine. Like I said in uh, the last time, in the last letter with me, is that these are really just guidelines to learn from. If you don't uh, follow them perfectly, the uh, guideline police are not going to come arrest you. Okay, and there is our flourished monoline. So let's add a new layer, turn off flourished monoline, and now we have the bouncy brush. So let's pull up that brush. And this is pressure sensitive. So um, if you apply hard pressure down toward when you're drawing towards you or your downstrokes, and when you're moving the pencil away from you or up towards the top of the iPad, you're gonna do light pressure. And then you can see, um, so light pressure, hard pressure, hard pressure, light pressure, and you can see the varying widths of those lines. If, uh, here's a tip, if you don't have an Apple Pencil or a pencil with pressure sensitivity, I do believe currently the only one on the market besides the Apple Pencil that has pressure sensitivity is a stylus called the Logitech Crayon. Um, so if you don't either have the, the crayon or the Apple Pencil, what you can do is use Monoline and do Folligraphy. So really that's drawing the letters and then adding some weight to the downstrokes. And I have a whole separate workbook on this. On how to do folligraphy, if you like. Um, you can leave me a message and I will direct you to that. But that is how you would do it with the monoline pen. Okay, but let's go back to our brushy bounce. And for June, hard pressure and then light pressure. And then you can add a top to the J or just leave it like that. I like to add a top because I don't want to be confused with an L. So we have our underturn. And this style is a little bit bouncy, so you can see some of these letters go beneath the baseline and some go above the, the X height. So hard pressure, light pressure, hard pressure, light pressure, hard pressure, light pressure, light, hard, and light. Hard, light, and then I keep it light to cross over and to add the top. And for my ovals, I like to start on the right when I'm doing uh, these this style of lettering. So I start over here and I go light, hard pressure, light pressure. So as soon as the pen starts moving towards me or the bottom of the iPad, I add a little bit of pressure to it. Unless it's a flourish, then I have different rules for, for those. hard pressure then I'm going to start down here at the bottom draw up with light pressure down with heavy pressure and then 
bring that around and through with light pressure. So light pressure up, heavy pressure down, light pressure up. Heavy, light, heavy, light. Uh, some creators have drills that you can practice uh, before you actually start making the letters so um, to get used to your hard pressure so they might have you do a bunch of these over and over and then a bunch of these over and over just to work up your muscle memory to um, get used to light when you're moving up and heavy when you're moving down um, and then they start you know maybe doing ovals overturns and then you just do you know like hundreds of these over and over and over So like you do those shapes over and over and over again. Um, but personally, when I started lettering on the iPad, um, just like everybody, when you first start out, I was terrible. Um, and I hated doing those drills. I really, I just, I didn't. I just went straight into lettering. Um, and you know, I, I got where I am without doing the drills. So, you know, do them or don't do them. That's, that's completely up to you. Either way, as long as you're practicing something, you're going to get better and you're going to uh, learn it. So I do have um, on my website, kristenaplefry.com slash freebies. I do have um, a brush lettering workbook for free that you can download that does include drills in it. So um, you can download that if you do want to practice those drills. But um, because Procreate is, now if you're you know analog lettering and you're using pen and paper, absolutely do drills. You will, um, get better at, you know, having less shaky lines and, and, you know, consistency and all of that. But, um, using Procreate, the difference is you have the undo feature. So, um, you know, redoing a line so many times is a drill in itself. So, uh, yeah. I think with the iPad and having, you know, the stabilization and the streamline and all of the amazing lettering features, the guidelines, everything that Procreate has, drills are not as crucial as they are with regular pen and paper. That's just my opinion. Okay, new layer. Let's turn that layer off. And we are on Flourished Classic. So let's tap on that brush. And which one of these sizes is the correct size? I believe this is a size 18. Yes. Okay, so I at this point like to tilt my canvas so these uh, lines are um, easier for me to keep these letters on an angle. Let me just resituate in the chair real quick. My legs falling asleep. Okay, so with the J, um, I start by drawing. So before, when we were doing mono line, I started drawing this. But um, with this style, I start with this um, heavy line coming down here. So I start light, heavy pressure, and then transition into light pressure for that flourish. 
And again, you can see I didn't stay on the line. That's fine. And uh, this line, I spoke about this last time, is called the universal line of beauty. So it's light pressure, heavy pressure, and light pressure. And that line is in so many uh, majuscules or uppercase letters of calligraphy. So we have this. And then I start here at the bottom and draw up so it's light pressure. heavy pressure and light pressure for the underturn. And then here we're going to have a compound curve. And then an overturn that goes into a flourish. Okay, now Father's Day, we have our universal line with a flourish there, and flourish the top of the F, and then I do a little hard pressure on that little, um, like a half an underturn there. So we have an oval. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm, you might have a, a hard time, I know I do sometimes, lining up this downstroke with the shape in front of it. So if you start too close, it cuts into the oval like that and um, kind of smushes your A together, or you might do it too far away. Um, so sometimes it's hard to get it like right perfectly and keep keep that angle now you can see here my angle is off a little bit because right here it's like right up on this line but then here there's that distance there so technically that um, example that I drew is a, you know a little bit off so feel free to fix those and keep it parallel it's too thick. Keep it parallel to that line. Now I'm going to start down here and we're going to do a compound curve. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. I just do a little bit of hard pressure and then go in, sorry, hard pressure going into light pressure and then pick up. And then I start with hard pressure and then go into light pressure for the flourish. I don't know why, but I always draw my apostrophes backwards. So instead of starting at the top and going down, I start at the bottom and go up. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. It's just. So with the S, we have hard pressure, light pressure, and then it goes into hard pressure again. And then you can end with a little loop. And then an exit flourish. Okay, for the D, we're going to have our universal line of beauty. And then the rest is light pressure. I'm going to redo this one because right here it's too thick. So I should have started um, letting up on my pressure um, a little bit higher up. Like that. So by the time you're going into that curve, it's a thin line and not a thick line. So for the Y, I do the universal line of beauty again. So I start thin, thick and then thin. 
whoops, <laughs> it went off the screen so it didn't pick that up. And then I start um, a little bit down in where, so I'll start right here because then you'll, you tend to see the break. So I'll go back a little bit and draw the rest of that flourish like that. Okay, Daddy. I'm gonna redo that. I did the same thing I did last time. And I know these are um, gear. Now that was a long stroke right there, so let me do that one again. So we do the ascending stem loop, which goes into the exit stroke, which goes into a compound curve, and then back up again. So that might be one, you know, that you might want to practice. That's what it would look like. Okay, and then let's finish off our flourish. And the descending stem loop. Now I forgot what I was gonna say before. Um, oh, that these are meant for beginners. But really, flourishing is more of a um, an advanced, I guess, calligraphy skill. So if you have a hard time with flourishes, don't beat yourself up because, like I said, um, I would start with the basics first and just learn the shapes of the letters before you try to do things like bouncing your letters like the bouncy style or the um, the flourishing but I wanted to include it in case we have some people who aren't beginners but um, might want to level up their basic style Okay. For the um, exit stroke in the O, I just do a little underturn there. You can probably hear my husband in the background. And that's going to cross the T. So the S, we start hard pressure, light pressure, hard pressure going around the curve, and then light pressure coming back up. Now this T is a, a you know, a big stroke, so let's go. Heavy pressure, light pressure. You can also add a little dot on the end of a C. And an exit flourish there. Okay, and then Juneteenth. Same way that we wrote June. Undo.
And then we have an underturn. Compound curve. Overturn. Uh, with flourishes, I mentioned this in the last one, but it's um, really important is uh, you do a lot of um, crossing over because you do a lot of switchbacks and changing direction. So whenever you're, um, whenever one line crosses another line, you want it to um, be thin crossing, thin, or a thin line crossing a thick line, but never a thick line crossing a thick line. So for example, if I were to use this, uh, my style here is just the flourishes are all thin, so I always have a thin line that's going to cross a thin line. Except for right here, the thin line is crossing the thick line. So that looks nice, okay. However, let's go down here. If we were uh, to not use the, you know, all thin flourish rule, um, and you would stick to the heavy pressure down, light pressure up, heavy pressure down, light pressure up, heavy pressure down, light pressure up, heavy pressure down. If you follow that rule, um, now you can see it looks a lot different. Um, but here we have a thin line crossing a thin line. Here we have a thin line crossing a thick line, which is okay. Um, here we have a thin crossing a thick, which is okay. But here it's two thick lines crossing. So I would want to make, I would want to lift up on my pressure before I cross that part of the end there, if that makes sense. So let's try that again here. So we have our T and our H. Okay, so thin pressure, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick. So again here, these have two thick lines crossing. So that doesn't quite look right. So let's try that again. So that looks much better because we have thin and thin, thin and thick, thin and thick, thin and thick. Okay, so those are the kind of the rules of flourishing. So if you want to add um, thickness in your flourishes, that is how you can use these uh, practice sheets, but still add flourishes like that. There's nothing that says that you have to follow my style. You can absolutely do a different style if you prefer. Okay, so our last one is Quirky. So let's go to the Quirky brush. Now this is a regular brush. It's not pressure sensitive, so you don't have to press hard. Um, you can, I just drew this uh, by hand, um, but sometimes, I, I mentioned this previously, I like to sometimes draw my letters backwards. So I'm used to drawing under turns like this. So I might draw my J like this, just because my hand has a little bit more control. So in, it's easier for me to um, draw like that instead of draw like that. <laughs> I don't know why. So, I mean, if it works for me, it might work for you also. Now you can either draw towards you, draw towards you, draw towards you, or you can, you know, do this all in one motion if you like, but I prefer, like I always say, to pick up after every, after every one. So with this, I said it wasn't pressure sensitive, but I want to show you a little trick. So let's say you want to have a color changing brush. Okay, so let's go to our brush. 
let's go into the settings and we're going to go where it says color dynamics and under pressure we're going to go to where it says secondary color and we're going to bump that all the way up and what that does is it lets you choose two colors so I'm going to click done and let's go to our color palette um, you can do this either on the disk uh, submenu or classic you'll see there's two rectangles up top so let's go to disk or classic oh it has it on harmony too and value just not on palettes okay so let's go to the classic and up here you can see there are two rectangles you can add colors in so let's say I'm going to use this green and then I'm going to tap the second one and choose the lighter green okay so now um, if I add pressure, so coming down is going to be hard pressure and uh, light pressure is going to be the light color. So that's one little trick you could do. Um, it does look better with a more calligraphy style instead of this quirky style. But that is how you can get um, two colors in um, your brush. Now let's go back to the brush settings. Go back to quirky and in the color dynamics let's turn that off let's go back down to zero and this time let's go to stroke color jitter so um, for this I'm going to turn the hue up maybe uh, say 25 percent okay and I'm going to choose a color let's choose this bright orange color and now what this does is with every new stroke it's going to change the hue 25% um, within 25% of that color so if we look at the color wheel right now we're right here so the whole wheel would be a hundred percent half of the wheel would be 50% so it would choose from these colors right here and 25% is just a quarter whoops so it's only going to choose these colors here but what's important is if you do it all in one stroke, um, it's only going to change for each stroke. So you can do all your letters in one stroke or you can change it up. So that went from red to orange. Like a mustard to a yellow and then an orange to a red. So you can have it be very colorful that way as well. So let's, whoops, go back into the brush and let's bump it up to 50% and see what that looks like. So that's just a fun little tip that you can try just to make your lettering a little bit more fun. Also, if you have a hard time, like if you draw your M's like this and you have a hard time remembering to pick up your pen, this will kind of, it's like a visual reminder because like, you know, you won't have the color changes with every stroke. Okay, so that's really fun. And 
Now those colors um, are too close to the same color for me so I'll just undo and then the next time it'll pick a little bit different of a color. And it just randomly picks a color somewhere within 50% of that. So let's go now and change it to 100% and see what that looks like. So back into our brush settings, let's turn the hue up to max. And now it's going to use the entire color wheel. Get a different color for that. There we go. And a different one. I like the E with all one stroke. See? Uh, let me undo, so I want a different color there. So hopefully that little tip is helpful for you. If you don't want that to overlap like that, sometimes I'll draw the crossbars first and then the color on top is going to lay on top of that color, so um, it looks like the crossbar isn't overlapping. So there you have it. Those are our five styles for the five different, um, oh look, I, <laughs> I did all of that lettering on a new one. I forgot to add a new layer or go back to the, the correct layer. But I do just wanna show you, let me turn this off, um, without the practice sheets, what the, the lettering looks like. So you can then go in and um, use any of these. Uh, in your design work. So if we go to this layer and um, let's go to select, make sure color fill is off, and let's circle around the selection that we want. And then you want to uh, touch that gray dot so it closes up all the way. I have vertical lines on my screen, you might not be able to see them. So let me go to the wrench preferences and selection mask visibility. Now you could probably see them a little bit better. Um, so now that we have that selected, I am going to go down here and choose copy and paste. So it copy and pasted that into its own layer. So now I could turn that off and now I can maybe resize this, move it around, put it in the center um, and you know, use it for Let's add a layer and let me go back to black and maybe I just want to say um, Happy Father's Day. I mean that's pretty um, Maybe if I make it bigger. Yeah, you could play around with it. But um, you can then also, you know, go in and recolor this or add a clipping mask. So let me just um, show you that tip really quick. So if you want to add, say, a, uh, a texture, um, Let's add a new layer and let's go to, let's go to the orange and we are going to drag and drop the color in. Let me move this below. Okay. Uh, now let me go to the magic wand and let's go to noise. Uh, let me, okay, we're gonna slide our pencil to the right a little bit to turn up the noise and you can play with the scale, make it a little bit bigger until it kind of looks a little bit glittery. 
you can play with the octaves and you can play with the turbulence and then if you want more noise you can just go back and continue turning that up until it's to your liking so that looks pretty glittery to me so uh, if you wanted to change the color of this glitter uh, say if you want it more of say like a blue color let's go to our back to our magic wand and go to hue saturation brightness and under the hue you can turn it to be more of a blue green pink purple that's a nice blue right there and now all we have to do is uh, make this into a clipping mask um, but it, right now it's just going to clip to happy and not Father's Day so um, we would want these two in the same layer so let's tap happy and choose merge down so it merges down into the layer beneath it now if we go here and add clipping mask now that uh, glittery looking paper has clipped to our happy Father's Day so there's an idea for maybe to make a card or a graphic or something to that effect um, that has uh, is using the practice sheets and also um, a little tip to add a little bit something extra to it. So thank you for watching and I can't wait for you to join me for the next letter with me.